I remember sitting on the edge of the bathtub, just kind of staring at it and not really sure, you know, how long is this supposed to take? But almost instantly I watched as there was this little, this little pink plus sign on the pregnancy test. Liz was 21 years old when she married her college sweetheart. Their plan was to wait five years before starting a family. So when I found out I was pregnant, I was completely shocked, um, very much overwhelmed by the way that my life was gonna change. It wasn't what I had expected. It wasn't what we'd planned. And yet, having so recently prayed for God's direction, his hand just felt like it was wrapped over the whole thing. At eight weeks, Liz had her first ultrasound. And I remember just physically shaking going in there because I knew when we see this baby on the screen, like this is real. And the technician looks at me and she asked me if twins run in our family. And so I made some joke and, you know, just tried to brush it off, tried to brush off the nerves. And she looks at me and she says, well, here's baby A and here's baby B. Additional news revealed that the boys were identical twins and could be at higher risk for twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome, which means the boys shared blood vessels and blood flow. But we had no signs of that at all. And so nothing showed up in any of our ultrasounds. There were no warning signs of anything that was to come and everything just looked really perfect. Liz began to plan for her boys' arrival and she and her husband decided on their names. We had Alistair, uh, who was our little, he was very serious. He was kind of stuck in the same spot the whole time and he, um, he didn't really move. He was very serious, determined to be the firstborn. And then we had Landon, who was, we called him our little monkey because he was constantly flipping around and moving and very active. At 30 weeks, Liz went for a routine checkup and everything was fine, everything was perfect, um, same as it had been for the entire pregnancy. Two days later, I woke up and was just feeling a little bit off. Um, I thought I'd picked up a bug or something and I wasn't really sure what it was. We were scheduled to have our maternity photos and so I kind of wondered if I should just push it off and reschedule, but I knew that the boys could come at any time. So there was just that something in the back of my mind that said, no, you need to do this. The feelings persisted, and then the boys stopped their active movement. And so we said, we'll just monitor it for another 24 hours, and you know, maybe they're just having a slow day, you know, they're getting squished in there, things are tighter, they're not, you know, moving with the big movements that they're usually moving with. And so we called the hospital, didn't even hesitate. They said, just come in. And they check us in, and as they're taking us in to examine, uh, examine me, I feel this just big stomach kick. And I knew it was from Landon because I knew where he was positioned. And I thought to myself, oh, we came in for nothing. Like, this is what I've been waiting for for the past three days. Now they're gonna wake up and move and they're just, the hospital is just gonna send us home and think we're, you know, overreacting. And what I didn't know at that time I didn't know at that time that that was the last time that I would ever feel Landon move. As doctors monitored the baby's heart rates, Landon's heart rate continued to drop. Liz was prepped for an emergency C-section. And so I remember feeling the cool rush of the medicine and going through my arm and having them count me down from 10. And the last thing I remember thinking is, God, I place the three of us in your hands. And there was nothing else I could do in that moment. I had, you know, I was fighting as hard as I could for my boys, but in that moment, it was all up to God and it was all in his hands. While waking up in the recovery room, Liz could only think of one thing to say. I just remember kind of slurring the word twins and that was kind of all I could even say in that moment. It was just twins, twins. And the nurse kind of just looked at me and she said, you know, we're gonna bring your husband in. And I got that kind of sinking, sinking feeling in my heart. And Andreas came in and he just looked at me and he said, honey, we lost Landon. So the nurse brought in Landon and I got to hold him 
He was wrapped in this little green blanket and his body was still warm. And I just held him and I cried over him. And I prayed for a miracle. I prayed that his heart would start beating, that his breath, you know, lungs would start breathing. And we didn't get that miracle, but we got moments to say goodbye to him. And we got to hold him and we got to love him even in death, even in his stillness. And so looking back at it a few days later, I realized that that was his kick goodbye to me. And that was his way of saying, it's okay, mommy. I'm going somewhere that is so much better. And I'm going to be in the arms of someone who loves me so much. Doctors confirmed that the boys had developed acute twin-to-twin -twin transfusion. They said that if we'd waited another 12 hours to come in, we probably would have lost Alistair as well. I knew, though, looking back, that God's hand had been so clearly over the whole pregnancy that his hand had to be in this too. And so there was great comfort in knowing that he hadn't left us in this moment, he hadn't abandoned us in this moment, and that even though I couldn't necessarily see him right now, I couldn't see how he was working, I couldn't see what tomorrow held, I knew that I could still trust him with today. And that's not an easy place to get to. You know, you, <laughs> you get there some days and then you take two steps back and you wrestle with it all over again. And you, you know, you cry and you sob and you wail and you mourn and you grieve and it hurts. It hurts so deeply. And yet in that place of complete brokenness, you have to turn to Christ. You have to realize that you can't do this on your own and that there is hope and that there is comfort offered there. Just trusting him and knowing that these little ones are in his hands and whether I get to bring them home from the hospital or not, they are safe and they are being held just as I am being held in this moment too.